All right, so today we're going to get started on an 820-3476 board that is not turning on and not giving us a green light in the charger. I'm going to try to walk through what it is that's wrong with it, and hopefully we can solve it. So let's bring up the schematic in the board view over here so that we can check out why it is that may be occurring. And so... How does the charger talk to the SMC? How would we get a green light? That circuit works up here. So, charger, adapter sense. This is with a charge port. This is the adapter sense line. And this is the chip that allows the charger adapter sense line to talk to the system management controller. You can see sys1 wire. Would go is a bi-directional data line that's going to go to U5000, which is the SMC. So let's go back up here. Now, in order for this to work, this chip needs to be powered by this chip. And this chip over here is going to take 3.42 volts and pass it through. And by the way, if you want to be able to know when we release new videos and do new streams, make sure to ring the bell. So after you subscribe, there's a little bell. And if you don't ring the bell, it's as if you didn't subscribe at all. That's a new YouTube thing. So ring the bell if you actually want to watch this stuff. And if you don't, I would kind of wonder why it is you were subscribed to begin with. So let's go back here. And so we need PP3V42 to be present. And we also need SMC, BC, ACOK. So let's see if that's present. Now, you may notice that Paul Daniels has given us some sufficiently more sophisticated multimeter software here. Is this not cool? I think this is amazing. It beats the crap out of what B&K offered. Really enjoying this new multimeter software. So a big thank you to Paul Daniels for making this available. You can find him at pldaniels.com. So let's bring up the microscope camera and take a look at what is going on. So microscope view. First thing we want to do, remember, PP3V42 is needed for the SMC and also for this chip. So we're going to find PP3V42, and that's going to be present on L7095. So let's find L7095, and it looks like there's a little worm next to it, or some sort of weird thingy over there. Let's measure and see what we get. So it seems that we get 3.42 volts on PP3V42, and Paul Daniels' software is reporting millivolts. It seems I praised Paul Daniels too soon. Yep, my multimeter is reading 3.42V, and his software is reading 3.42MV, which means... Hmm, all that money that I paid for this software, Paul. All that money I paid for this software, Paul. <laughs> no, he put this together for free. I'm, I'm just messing with you. I'm just messing with you. I love this software. It still beats the hell out of the BNK. And you, 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 I'll read out until we figure this out, what it is. This is good stuff. Yeah, this is on Paul Daniels' GitHub. And it's, it is good software. So we have 3.42 volts. So now let's go over to the circuit that is required to allow the charger to talk to the SMC and see if it's working. Now, if U7000 over here is getting 3 volts on pin 1, I don't even need to check anything over here. Because SMC BC ACOK is required for U7001 to pass PP3V42 over to U7000. But if U7000 is already getting it on pin 1, then we don't really need to check it. So let's find U7000, which is going to be right over here, and check it on pin 1 to see if it's turning on the way that it's supposed to. So we're going to measure voltage over there. And just remember that MV actually means volts. That must be some, some Australian thing that I'm not really sure about. Yep, so I, I think in Australia, when it says MV, that actually means volt. It's probably one of those silly Fahrenheit versus Celsius things that they got going on, too. So over here, it looks like we're getting 3.42. So the circuit that allows the charger to talk to the SMC is working fine. We can't blame that. At this point, what I'd like to do is figure out if the SMC itself is actually working. Is the SMC being told to turn on? Is the SMC broken in any way? So we're going to go over to the area of the board that turns the SMC on. And what turns the SMC on is going to be the SMC reset IC, which you can find over here. We're going to go over to this chip. Now, this is responsible for turning the SMC on. And the SMC is going to turn on the moment that PP3V42 is present. But PP3V42 
is not going to stabilize instantly. So if PP3v4.2 comes on and it's kind of you know wibbly-wobbly and the SMC immediately just tries to turn on with it, it'll crash. So what this chip does is, it, and this resistor, is it sends out a signal called SMC reset L. Now, SMC reset underscore L means that when the signal is low, make sure the SMC is in reset mode. So this resistor pulls up SMC reset L to ensure the SMC is not in reset mode. This chip pulls that signal down to zero so that the SMC remains in reset mode. If the, so the whole idea here is to keep the SMC in reset mode, to keep it from turning on before the rail has stabilized. Once the PP3v42 rail is stabilized, SMC reset L goes away, the SMC exits reset mode, and everything works beautifully. But we need SMC reset L to be on for that quarter of a second when the machine first gets power so that the SMC doesn't crash. It's kind of like a brownout detector. So let's take a look at what's going on in that area and see if SM, what SMC reset L is. So we can find SMC reset L right over here. We can find its voltage and let's see what we get. Okay, so SMC reset L is 0.42 volts which I'm sure that somehow we could blame on Paul Daniels. Most likely it's Paul Daniels' fault for the fact that we don't have it. So on one side of the resistor we get 3.42, and on the other side of the resistor we get 0.42. So it seems like SMC reset L is being pulled down. Now there are two reasons for SMC reset L to be pulled down. The first could be at the SMC reset IC, which is a teeny tiny 8-pin chip, easy breezy beautiful to replace, is bad. The second could be that U5000, the SMC, is bad, which is a chip with 96 balls and that you must take from a donor board and reball, which would be utterly miserable. So I'm going to hope and pray that it's U5110. I'm going to remove U5110 and see if that does anything. Someone asked the strange parts guy just upgraded an iPhone from 64 to 128. Is there a market for that service? Uh, no. So here's why. Firstly, you got to pay a good amount of money for the chip. Secondly, you have to disassemble the phone. Thirdly, you have to program it. Fourthly, you have to solder it on. Fifth, you have to take responsibility for everything that goes wrong with the phone. And six, people are going to expect that service to cost a total of something like 100 bucks. Not economically viable. It's economically viable if you're in China. It is not ec economically viable with the cost of rent, workmen's comp insurance, salaries, cost of living, taxes, etc. that you have in America, particularly in New York City. That it's the same thing as with upgrading RAM on a MacBook. Like, is it technically possible to upgrade the RAM on a MacBook Air? Technically, yes. Is it in any way, shape, or form remotely economically viable within the United States? My argument is no. If you can make it work for you, great, but that would just kind of be some kind of slave labor camp if I tried to do it. Because again, you have to be able to, you're going to be paying a good amount of money for the chip. You have to, pre there's this programming of it involved, there's soldering involved, there's all this stuff, and people are going to want that to be done for like 100 bucks. So that is a ter terrible idea, in my opinion, if you're in the United States to, like, I, I wouldn't plan to get rich off it. Again, you could prove me wrong, but my, my base advice would be that, that that's not a great way to make money. So... Let's remove the SMC reset IC and go from there. We're going to preheat a little bit from far away. And remember, if you're on YouTube and you want to see more of this type of repair, and you've subscribed but you don't get notifications, remember to ring the bell. If you ring the bell, there's at least a fighting chance that you'll actually know when we go online. But if you don't ring the bell, well, then you'll never see our stuff and it'll get buried. And, well, that's no good. I feel like such a shill saying, ring the bell, ring the bell. Okay, so I've removed the SMC reset IC. So at this point, there should be nothing pulling it to ground. So if SMC reset L is high, 
is low. If SMC reset L is low over here, that means the only thing that could be doing it is the SMC, which would need replacement, and that would be terrible. It would almost be as terrible as if you didn't ring the bell. All right, so I'm going to turn the power back on, and let's see what we get at SMC reset L. Oh, got to turn the meter on. 3.38 volts. So that means that the issue with this board was the SMC reset IC. That was it. So once we replace the SMC reset IC, we should have a working motherboard. And just so you know, just in case you're kind of curious, you'd like to buy an SMC reset IC, but you're not quite sure where to get an SMC reset IC. If you're thinking of getting an SMC reset IC, if this is the type of thing that, that you think would be useful to have in your shop, if you're looking for any types of parts at all, have you checked out store.rossmangroup.com? Go to store.rossmangroup.com today to find all of your MacBook and iPhone component level board repair parts, tools, all sorts of fun stuff. You can just simply type in the name of the chip and it will bring you to a page. And it will even tell you on the bottom of that page what board it's compatible with. Did I say that I was working on an 820-3476? I did. And right over here, under compatible boards, it says 820-3476. In the description of the chip, it even tells you the common fault that you should check before buying the chip so it'll even help you throughout your troubleshooting process. Check using our high-resolution photos to ensure that you're buying a chip that matches your model motherboard. You can even search by the name of the chip. So if we search the, the machine using the information on the schematic over here, which says SN0903049, we can type that in right up here. SN090. And it will even auto-complete for you and tell you the names of similar chips. Store.rossmangroup.com. Free same-day shipping from New York within the continental U.S. for orders over $30. Under $30, shipping may apply. Support from real technicians. Shop. Don't delay. Shop today. Now, let's go back and uh, get ourselves another chip. So I'm just going to tin the pads over here. Let's tin the pads. We are going to get this SMC reset IC chip replaced even faster than Israel will trick the United States in a war in Syria. Let's go. All right. So we are just going to tin our pads there. We got a little bit too much solder on the center pin, but uh, we're just going to push that out like we always do, and it'll be just fine. So... Get ourselves a donor board. <laughs> Remove the chip from that donor board. And we're going to solder it on. It's going to be a nice, beautiful chip and a nice, beautiful board. Our SMC reset will be back up to 3.3 volts in no time. I bought a TS-100, but I didn't use your affiliate link. Thanks for the review. Well, thank you very much, Alex Apol, and thank you for that That chip has been soldered on as crooked as the deep state, and we're just going to clean up some of those little solder blobs sticking out over there. Bada bing, bada boom.
still as crooked as the deep state, but should work fine. Just going to wait, cool this thing off a little bit. And once it's cooled off, we're going to try turning it on, see if we get ourselves one of those beautiful fan spin moments. And if we get a fan spin, then we can start on another board. You may wonder, how did that fail? Well... <gasps> it's a J-Dag connector! What do we do to J-Tags on this channel? What will, the f what will the fate be of that JTAG connector? Do we tolerate JTAG connectors? And hey, this is a really interesting one. Check this out. Check this out, folks. Check this out. So, this is the pin right over here. It's the fourth pin over that's got food on it. And the JTAG connector has SMC Reset L on the fourth pin. So that is the... That chip got killed by food. It got killed by a piece of food. That's all it takes to kill an Apple product. Nothing. Nothing. Look at that. Look at that. This is it. This is it. SMC Reset L on pin 24. Pin 24 has a piece of food on it. Look at this. An ant could have carried that in there. Oh my god. So what are we going to do to that connector? What do we do to JTAG connectors on this channel? We are going to frame the JTAG connector. And there you go. That was the cause. That was it. That's all it takes. That's it. Bye bye, JTAG. All right, so now all we got to do next is check and see if we get ourselves a fan spin. So we're going to plug in our MagSave connector, see if we get ourselves a light. It appears that we have a light. See that? That's a light. There's actually, it looks like Hal, Hal 9000 right there. That's creepy. Incredibly creepy. And if we move over here, you'll see that we have a fan spin. That's beautiful. That's exactly what we were looking for. A beautiful spinning fan. See this? Eh? Look at that. Bada bing. Bada bing. That's it. What's the purpose of that connector if you can just remove it? It's to help Apple diagnose things at the factory and also to help Apple program these machines if they ever return to them for refurbishing at the factory. And I just feel so bad. I just feel so bad that if this machine returns to Apple, it's just going to be a little bit more difficult to fix it. My heart just, it just, pour, just pours out of my chest, has palpitations. It gets clogged just thinking about that poor employee at the factory whose job fixing this may be just a teeny tiny bit harder. All right, 
That's it for today. As always, I hope you learned something, and if you would like to see these videos more often, make sure to ring the bell. Because if you don't, YouTube will never notify you that I've done a video. That's it for today, and uh, I'll see you next time.